So let me just check what I'm up to, guys. Position doesn't matter. Create a main game script and add the following code. Okay, that's fine. So you can see I've, I've sort of previously prepared these, so and, and I've actually tested this already, so that it's not. Uh, so I'm not trying to figure it out as we're going through the video, just so that you guys can copy and follow along as easily as possible, um, without me sort of making bugs or anything. All right. So the first thing is, um, let me just explain uh, the update score. So the update score function, obviously, it updates the score. It, it does what it says. Now, like we said before, the scoring is what we're going to do over time. Is we're just going to tick the score up, so it goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, uh, and so on and so on. And the longer that the player stays in the game, the higher the score. Uh, later, we're going to add like bonus points, like you might have seen in our games, uh, ping pong, ping ball X, and that is going to um, we're going to add like bonuses where if the ball goes through something, you get more points. But for for now, we're just going to have a basic score ticking for the sake of this uh, tutorial video. So the first thing what we need to do is, um, uh, actually let me explain this part. So the score object here, uh, this is basically a, a storage object, a, a variable which allows us to hold some piece of information. In this case, we're holding the score information. Uh, the reason that we're setting it to private is that we don't need to access the score information from any other scripts. If this was not private, then I could I could look at the score from the paddle script or from the ball script, or inside in, inside of Unity itself. But in this case, the score I just want to keep that private, and I don't want any other script to access that that score. And it's part the reason that we have this private often is is for to make the code more stable and more secure. If this was all if this was not private and basically it was public and all of the scripts could access it then it might get changed somewhere in another script and I wasn't aware of it and I don't know why it's happening and it's causing some bugs because of this and that just wastes time because obviously then I've got to go and find out where this bug is and why that's happening. So wherever possible I always make things private and, and you should do that as well as a basic practice. Um, the, the var statement here is basically just saying that it's, it's, a, it's of type variable, it's, it's a piece of information is the best way to describe it and, and that information we can look at or we can change. Then we're going to give it the name score and it's of type integer. When we ever see these, um, uh, what would we call this, a colon and then say integer, this one that comes after the colon inside of JavaScript and Unity basically says what type of information this is. And in this case, it INT means integer, which is basically a number without any decimal point, so it can't be 1.5 or 1.6, it's always going to be 1, 2, 3 with no decimal point, okay? And this equals 0 is just an initial value, and then we always close our statement with this inverted comma here, okay? This initial value we don't have to set, we could just do it like this if we wanted to. But in this case it just it's just a little bit more intuitive, it's just a little bit more clear about, okay, we're resetting the score to 0 when when the this scene first loads, alright? And the second thing is here, we've actually got the score 3D text. And this is the, the score object that we actually made inside of Unity here, this one, this, uh, this score 3D text. And that's why we've named it the same, so that inside of the scripts, we know we're accessing or we're changing that, that score 3D text inside of the game world. Okay? So now that we've got these two, uh, these two pieces of information or these two objects that we want to work with, we want to do something to them. And in this case, like I said, in the update score function, we're basically going to get the score here, which is this number value, and we're going to increase it by one every time. So if you remember I said before, plus uh, the times equals, um, I don't know what we call this, but a times equals basically uh, changes the math of something. It, it, it multiplies something by another number. And in this case, we're doing an addition. Okay, so I could write it like this if I wanted to. I could put score plus score. Uh, score equals, sorry, score plus one. So it's adding itself plus the number, okay? So we could write it like that, but it's just a lot faster and easier to write it like we've got here. So it's basically saying score plus itself plus one, is, and that's what that's the, the sum, that's what we want to calculate. And once we've got the score, what we want to do is show it to the player, of course, so that they can see their progress and they can see how they're doing. So in, what we're doing for that is we're taking the score 3D text object we're accessing its text component because this is basically accessing this part here, this text component of the text mesh. 
Um, if we didn't access this part of it, we would get an error. Okay, so we have to access this text part. And what we're saying is equals score. This is what we want to write inside of the text. Uh, and remember, this this is basically a string here. This is just a sentence that we can change. I could I could change this to score is or score whatever we want to call that. And then add the score on the end. Okay, so this is taking this score number here and we're changing it to a string. We're using dot to string and what that does is it makes that number into a, a character like a string, like an ABC character, okay? And the reason that we do that is because this score text uh, component here will only accept a string. It won't accept an integer. So we'll get an error if we don't do this part here, okay? So just to explain the syntax a little bit more as well, if I type score, uh, if I didn't have what I need to do is to the score string, I need to add that number, that score number, that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I use the plus sign here. And what that does is it just adds the string together. I could put like this, I could say plus is plus score if I wanted to say that. And then at the end of that, I could also have score so big, whatever we want to say. We could do it like that if we really wanted to. But don't forget, yeah, we need to add the plus in there so that the plus combines them together inside of a string. So you guys can write this, so have a play around with it and definitely, you know, what works best for your games and how you want to present this to the user. But in this case, we're just going to say score is uh, score and then colon and then plus the score itself, the string, and then and then update that. So update, uh, update score. So like we mentioned before, invoke repeating is, is really, really useful. Invoke repeating uh, allows you to delay and repeat something over and over. So it could happen every one second, every one second, or every half second, half second, half second, however you want to do that. So in this case, we're calling it invoke repeating the update score function, which is this one here. Remember, we have to give the name of the function. We're going to start the count at 0 0.05 seconds. So it's going to start on 0 0.05 as soon as the game scene opens. And then we're going to call it every 0 0.05 seconds. So every single time 0 0.05 happens, it will call this function, this update score. Okay. So if I click on uh, Control S or Command S to save it, go back into Unity, looking at the bottom right here to see if there's any errors. We're good. There's nothing there. And if I click on um, Play, we're going to get an error, I think, because it won't have the score oh no not, not yet sorry what I need to do is actually we need to add that general script uh, sorry that main game script that we just created we need to add that into the general scripts game object okay so remember the general scripts game object is already inside the game world but the main game scripts that here that we've just created it's not inside the game yet it needs to be dragged into the game in order to start in order to come to life if it just sits here inside of the project view, in the project uh, uh, hierarchy or project folder, it won't do anything. It's just part of the your game project, but it's not included in the game. Okay, so that's why we've got an empty script, an empty an empty game object. Sorry, called general scripts. Empty game objects usually just hold scripts, and they're nothing visual, and so therefore the position doesn't matter. So I can move this general scripts object anywhere, and it doesn't matter at all. Okay. Uh, but it depends what the functionality is of the script. So if I just left click on main game, drag that in and let go, there we go, the main game script is now attached to this general scripts game object. And if you noticed here, the score 3D text, inside of the scripts object, we didn't put private. And so when we don't put private, it actually appears inside of the Unity editor, which is very, very useful, because then that means we can just add things very simply to it. So in this case, we want to get the score 3D text. And if I drag this over and let go, you'll see there it's grabbed it and it's filled it up. And now if you click on it again, you can see it actually it highlights which one it is. Same with the main game scripts. And that's really useful. If you're looking to locate scripts, you just tap on it and it will highlight to inside of the editor or inside of the hierarchy. So if I click on play now, we should see the score tick up. And there we go. It's ticking up nicely. It's a little bit slow. Uh, <laughs> the frame rate is a little bit slow because I'm recording, but this is uh, this is usually sil silky smooth because uh, there's really not a lot going on. It's very, very simple. There you go, and it's going faster and faster. 
and game over if I let that pass. Okay, so that's working fine, and then it starts off again. Okay. So the next thing is, I think the high score comes next. So let me just double check. So we we put the main game script into the general scripts object. We put the score 3D text into the main game script, which is what we just did. And okay, so the other thing is we want to do is is uh, we want to set the high score. So obviously, you know, it, it's kind of hard. You could just see what the high score is here when the game finishes, when the ball goes past, but some people might not catch it and they might not know what the high score is. And, you know, for a game like Pong, I always want to know what my high score is. And I'm, I'm one of those players, like when I play, say, Bejeweled or Geometry Wars, I always want to beat my previous high score. And so it's great to have that. And, you know, most games do, of course. So the first thing is, let me just take this. I'm just going to copy this code here. We're going to go back into the main game scripts, okay? If you've not got that open, then just double click on main game here inside of the project view. That'll open, and let me just paste this in. All right, so like I said before, the main game script, what I like to do is I like to keep the, the game over and the score state inside of the main game script so that it's all in one place. I don't really like to keep main game inside of the ball or paddle or some other area. Uh, and that's just for ease of use, especially when I'm coming back to the code later. It just makes it a lot clearer where things are. When projects become really big and complicated, then it's very important that your structure and where things are laid out are, are, are pretty clear so that anybody else looking in the code can access it and, and understand it as easily as possible as well. So let me just, okay, so, all right. So the game over function um, does what it says. It makes it game over. And it calls application.load level, which is what we did before inside of the ball script. But we're going to cancel that out of the ball script, and we're going to do it here instead. But before the game over is called, before we go into the menu screen using application.load level, we want to record the high score so that we can show the player inside of the main menu. Okay? And what we're doing is we're checking here. So we're saying if the score, which is this one here, and it's the one that gets updated every single 0 0.05 seconds. If the score is bigger than the store, than the score that is uh, has been stored previously, then we want to set the score again. Okay. This player prefs here. What this player prefs does is it um, it maintains data. So if the if the game is turned off or your application closes or uh, if you if you have two scenes, like we have one game scene and one main menu scene, when this game scene closes and this one opens, all of the data here gets removed from memory. Um, the paddle, the ball, the walls, the scripts just get removed. And so what we want to do is we want to have some kind of data that's persistent, that is held inside of the, you know, then get that information. Or if the player closes the application down, then they can access that information later at some point. And the high score is a, is a great example of that. Of course, we want to keep the high score so that we can show off and tell our friends and, hey, look at my great high score. And so that's what we're doing here is we're holding the, the high score locally uh, on side, inside of the device or inside the PC or the Mac. And that's what player prefs does. If I say player prefs dot get integer, I basically want to grab an integer from inside of the, the storage. And an integer, if you remember, is a number, but I need to tell it what number I want to get. And in this case, I want to get an integer called high score. If the high score does not previously exist, it doesn't matter. It will just grab, it will create one for you and it will give it a default value of zero, which is fine in our case. We haven't set a high score and therefore it can just be zero. <laughs> so we're telling it we want to find the high score. And if, it's, if the high score that we stored is bigger than the score, then we want to set the high score again. And in this case, we're doing player prefs again, which is the storage, the persistent data uh, library. And then we want to set the integer, and we want to tell it what integer, do we want, what integer do we want to set. In this case, it's high score. And remember, that has to be a, as a string. Remember the inverted commas so that it makes it into a string. And we want to pass it the value of an integer. Now, score is an integer as we set up here, so that's no problem. And, and so we're going to pass that score in, and that will record the score into that high score uh, persistent data object. Okay. If the score 